What's up, everyone? Welcome back to part eight of the Batwing fairing conversion on this 04 Harley Road King. Uh, in the last video, we went in and we mounted the uh, stereo, the amplifier, and the speakers uh, into the fairing and wired them up in order to uh, make sure everything worked, got everything routed correctly uh, in order to get us to the next step. The next step is to start the bodywork on this. Uh, this fairing is going to require a little bit of bodywork in order to straighten it out um, and make it ready to accept a really nice vivid black uh, paint job. So if you remember correctly, we took the fairing, uh, went through, drilled all of the holes, the holes to mount the wiring to bring the wiring through, uh, the holes for the amplifier, as well as the holes for the stereo enclosure. We cut the hole out for the stereo enclosure in order to make it uh, the correct size. And we went through and uh, pre-drilled all of the holes for the speakers. On the last speaker, uh, you didn't really see it in the video, but it was a little off kilter. I realized that after I went through and was looking at it. So I went through and, and corrected that and I got it sitting exactly where it belongs. Uh, but I am now left with uh, a total of eight holes in this one speaker hole. So I'm gonna go through and uh, fill those in with fiberglass as well as just kind of generally go over and smooth this thing out. Got to iron out a few wrinkles in order to make it um, look really nice and, and be nice and sleek when the paint job is on there. Uh, also, if you remember the, the fairing itself, the outer part of the shell was a little wavy in through here. So we're gonna go through, block this thing down, uh, smooth it out. It may require a little bit of fiberglass filler. I'm assuming most of it though, it's so light that I think I can probably get away with some body filler and just kind of smooth it out and make it look good. So. I have a attached car garage to my house and uh, I can do minor body work in here, small stuff. Um, however, when I start dealing with things that create a lot of fumes, uh, create a lot of um, dust and, and things like that, it makes its way into the house. And when that happens, uh, the wife is not too happy. So most of the body work that you're gonna see and most of the paint work uh, is, or I should say all of the body work that you're gonna see and all of the paint work that you're gonna see is gonna be done at my place of employment. So we're gonna switch over right now and we're gonna head over there and start making this thing look like it should. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna concentrate on is gonna be the inner part of the ferret. Um, and what I'd like to focus on first is going to be attaching these nut certs, or not attaching, but um, kind of locking these nut certs into place so that I do not have to worry about them ever um, spinning. If I was to, you know, accidentally cross sort a bolt, try to get it out, or just kind of got stuck and it wouldn't come out, um, I don't want that to happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, work on getting these nut certs to actually just be locked right into place and not having to worry about them spinning. What I did on my last bike, on the, uh, the last fairing I did in order to lock these into place, um, was I used a uh, two-part urethane adhesive. Uh, in the body shop we use it, we use it for um, repairing tabs on bumper covers, things along that line. Uh, what it, so it's technically not used for this, but it does work really well. Um, so what's called is a quick set 50, uh, and what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to go in here with a deburring bit, I'm going to clean up all around these edges, I'm actually kind of going to scratch up even the, the side of the nut cert as well. Uh, and then I'm gonna take this quick set 50, I'm gonna squirt it all around the inside edges of it, and then use an acid brush uh, in order to just kinda, you know, just kinda move it around and get it where I want it. Uh, the nice part about this stuff, thus the name, quick set 50, it sets up in right around a minute. So it uh, starts setting up in 50 seconds. So it, you gotta work really quickly with it, but you can get um, you can get some very fast results out of it. So that's what I'm looking for. Again, I just want to make sure that these are not going to move. I did go ahead and try to put a pair of duckbill vice grips on these to, to try to see if I couldn't get this, um, this corner of the fiberglass to just sit a little bit straighter. It's a no-go. Uh, the way the nut cert is in there, I, I don't think I have to worry about it. And it did, you know, the, the screw did go in a little crooked, but I, I think once everything's done and, and this is all, you know, ironed out and, and correct, I, th I think it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna leave the crack in there, I'm just gonna work around it and uh, obviously use the, the quick set around those around that nut cert. So, all right, let me go real quickly here, get set up and uh, get this done so we can move on to the next thing. Okay, well, she's not gonna win any beauty contests, but uh, 
the the problem is solved. Uh, everything is now uh, locked into place. I, I don't really think I have to worry about these things moving. Uh, it's still currently setting up, but you get the you get the idea. Uh, they are now um, pretty much bonded uh, to this inner fairing piece. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start concentrating on. Uh, fixing some of these holes, these extra holes that do not need to be here. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and widen out the holes. So I started, you know, these, these are the, in fact, the correct holes right here. Um, but I went through and I did kind of start slotting. I did this when I was at my house, kind of slotting these holes out to make them a little bit uh, larger. So I have some movement when I'm done. So I'm going to go in, uh, take a drill bit, and just kind of step up those holes, make them a, a touch larger so that they're going to be, um, you know, able to be moved around a little. Because I, I would, I would hate to, you know, run this thing through the booth and uh, paint it, get it all looking, you know, pristine and then start putting it back together and find out that I need to, uh, you know, make one of those holes larger in order to get the speaker to sit 100% correct. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fix that problem before it even happens and uh, make the holes just a hair larger, um, more along the lines of, of these right here so that they, uh, they can have some movement. Uh, that's going to be a very important thing when putting this back together. All right, let me grab a drill bit and a drill and uh, go to town on these things. And the holes are now drilled. Feel a lot better about that. They look a lot better. Everything's a little bit more uniform. Uh, looks as as it should. Uh, this is also going to allow me, like I said, to give a little bit of movement if I need to uh, maybe tweak one of those speakers left or right to get them all to look exactly the same once it's painted. Like I stated before, if I didn't do this and I went ahead and painted it and then I had to go back in and find out that I had to make a hole, you know, left or right or whatever, I'm now cutting into the brand new paint. I'm also going to go ahead, like I said, fix these little uh, additional boo-boos right here. Uh, those need to go away. So I'm going to go in and prep this out now. Uh, go ahead and uh, abrade the gel coat and just kind of make it... Um, Get, put, put some scratches in it so that it'll be able to accept paint. I don't think this whole thing needs primer. I think that would be a waste of primer to do that. Uh, really, you don't see half of it. So, you know, covered by the enclosure, covered by the speakers. Really, the only thing you can see is just this top here, a little bit on the sides or whatever. So, that'll be fine. The only areas that will end up priming is, uh, you know, in the vicinity of where these uh, additional holes were. All right, so I'm gonna go in and sand this up really quickly, and then we'll work on uh, filling those holes. I was gonna mix up matte and resin and all that good stuff and, and fill those in, but I think that's a little overkill. I think I'm gonna use a, just a little bit of short strand fiberglass filler, just plug those holes up. I'll get it on both sides so I can kind of smooth it out. Um, and then if there's any excess, I can just go back in with a drill bit and, and round that, uh, the hole that I need back out. All right, so give me one second. We'll go ahead and uh, get this thing sanded. And it's all sanded. So, if anyone's curious on what I used, uh, I did a DA. I used a dual action sander, a DA, uh, with 320 grit on it. And I went over the whole thing. Uh, then I went back in and just took a, a red scuff pad, wrapped a piece of 320 around it, and just continued to scuff the rest of it till every last bit of shininess uh, was gone off of this. If you're ever going to prep one of these out and paint it yourself, you must make sure that the uh, surface is abraded completely, meaning zero shininess left uh, because you won't have uh, good adhesion with your paint. Right, that's a very, very important piece. When I was going through, I was also rounding off all the edges, uh, anything that was sharp or kind of messed up uh, from where I cut it. Even the original holes, I went in and just tried to smooth them out as best I can. Again, a lot of this you're not going to see. I mean, it's, it's all going to be covered by paint um, and or covered by you know, all the electronics that are being bolted in here. Uh, one of the things I did uh, completely forgot about until just now uh, is along the top of this, when I test fit this thing and I put the, the windshield in and everything, I started, you know, clamping everything down, uh, I realized that when they when they made this mold or when they made this, this fairing piece here, they, they made it a little thicker on the ends. Uh, I don't know if that's just part of the process or whatever. Uh, that's not going to work for me. Also, you know, there's a couple of I don't know if you can see it in the in the video or not, but there's a couple of little choppy edges here that I don't really I don't really care for. 
So I'm gonna go in here with a grinder and I'm actually gonna smooth this down a little bit um, because I actually want it to be uh, this thickness here, you know, and this is gonna be far too thick right there. So I'm gonna try to make that a little bit closer to what it's supposed to be. I think if I just kind of knock most of it down with a grinder uh, and then come back in with a piece of sandpaper and smooth it out and I can get rid of, uh, you know, some of these factory defects, these like chop marks where they, where they cut it. So again, like I said, these things aren't perfect. They're, they're gonna need work. So if you're, if you're ever planning on doing this yourself, just, just know what you're getting into before you start getting into it. Uh, so, all right, so I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna take care of that. Um, I'm also going to uh, just continue to smooth everything up a little bit more. I had a few more areas that I gotta kind of mess with. Uh, but other than that, I think we're gonna be ready to start grinding these here, uh, getting them ready for fiberglass filler. So I'm gonna do that right now. Let's get going. And all the stuff is ground down. I was able to go in and make this line a little bit more uniform. Now this is gonna work, as well as this side. Smooth out those edges a little bit. I was able to kind of make that notch look a little bit more closer to a factory notch. Uh, the other thing too, I went in and I ground up the front here, as well as the back, uh, in anticipation of putting uh, some fiberglass filler in there to try to plug up those, uh, those holes that aren't supposed to be there. So let's get going on that, start mixing some of that up. All right, we got the uh, fiberglass filler setting up. So I don't know if you saw that in the time lapse, what I did was I just basically went in, mixed the stuff up, smoothed it out, uh, took a spreader, just kind of put it in to make sure it went into the hole itself, uh, smoothed out the back, make it look as close to, uh, you know, good as I could. Um, then I went through and because it filled in my original holes, I actually just took the drill bit that I used to drill those holes, used the back of the drill bit while it was still soft and just kind of pushed it through to the other side so that the hole is um, still there. Uh, it'd be, you know, if you went ahead and filled the hole in, you'd have to go back and drill it all out. So you catch it while it's wet, you can just kind of push it right through there and, and be done with it. So the holes that I need to have filled are now filled. Um, I'll go back in here. I'll probably rough it up real quick with a piece of 80 grit uh, just to knock it down. Then I'll smooth it out with like some 180 uh, and then just try to get all the excess stuff off around all the edges there just to make it look a little bit better. The backside I'm not overly concerned with because it's rough anyway. Uh, but I'll go in and make the front look good and that's where I'm going to prime. That's the area that I'm gonna prime. And that'll probably be about the only area that I will have to prime on this thing because everything else sanded out pretty good. It all looks pretty decent. I'm happy with it. Did miss a little spot right there. I have to hit that guy up. Um, but other than that, this will be ready to go, I think. Uh, from here, we're gonna move on to um, the front of the fairing. So uh, while this is curing, I'm gonna get the front of the fairing here. We'll start working on that. I'll show you what we're gonna do to that. Okay, so here's the outer part of the fairing. Um, and if you remember in past videos, uh, we were looking down the side of it when I first got it and I was kind of showing you all the different waves that are in there. You can kind of see all that. I'm gonna just kind of go in here real quick with a, with a long board, a rigid long board, and I'm gonna sand this so you can kind of get an idea of what these high and low spots actually look like because I don't think the camera gives you a true rendition of how, um, how this thing looks. So I'm gonna go in here and just kind of really quickly abrade this thing because we're going to be working in this area anyway so it really doesn't matter i'm going to go through here and just kind of show you exactly what we got going on here this is uh so this is a flat plane right and you know this thing is all although it does have a slight dip to it um it shouldn't have as much of a dip as it does and you're going to see exactly what i'm talking about uh, when i go through here all right, so if you look at this, and you can see where the board has hit and where it hasn't hit, all right? Now, again, like I said, this is supposed to kind of dip a little bit in the front, but I don't think it's supposed to be that rippled. I mean, you can see a multitude of ripples in this thing when you look across it. So what I'm planning on doing, everything down here seems pretty good. I'm okay with 
you know, the, the sides and, and the, the lower front of it. it. The top of it is where, you know, when it's on the bike and you're looking at it, you're going to see that. So I want to just try to smooth that out a little bit. Now, I'm not going to go crazy because I don't want to, you know, thicken the body filler right up and make it look, you know, I don't, I don't want it to be super thick. I want it to be nice and, and uniform, and I don't want to have to worry about cracking down the road or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to come in here uh, with some 80 on a DA, buzz this thing down right in through here, and uh, just kind of go in and maybe lightly grind some areas. And then I'm going to fill it in with a little bit of body filler. I'm not even going to go with fiberglass. I'm, it doesn't, it's rippled, but it's not that deep. Uh, it's something that I think probably like less than, an, maybe a 16th inch of body filler will, will level that out and I'll be able to make it look uh, a lot better than it does. And then when I'm done, um, I think I'm just going to buzz this whole outer fairing down and I'm going to prime the whole outer fairing. Like I said, the inner, you really don't see. It's got a lot of stuff bolted to it. But this right here, this is what you're going to see when you look at the bike. So I'd like to have it look as perfect as possible. I want it to look like it is, you know, like a factory piece that came on the bike um, and it always belonged there. So that's, that's the goal for this. All right, let me grab a DA. I'm going to take some 80. I'm going to buzz this thing down and uh, we'll see what we're working with. All right, so... 80 grit on the whole area. Then I went through with a grinder, some 36 grit. Went in, put some scratches in there. I got some nice deep grooves going on here. So, well, not overly deep, but just deep enough that the filler will accept it. Blown it all down, I'm gonna clean it real quick. I'm gonna make up some, make up some body filler and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna lay a nice coat right here. From here, I'm gonna go in and block that all out, smooth it all out, make it look exactly like it should until this thing feels nice and smooth. Uh, then the rest of it will get prepped, like I said, uh, with like 320 grit, uh, finish off my filler in like 320, and then I'm going to go ahead and get it into uh, the prep station area, and we're going to go ahead and put some primer on it. All right, let's do it. I just finished uh, sanding it uh, with 180 grit. So um, I did the 80 to block it, and then I went to 180 uh, after I took the DA with the 80 and knocked off the top skin. That's just a, a technique that makes it a little easier to sand when you have fresh filler on there. So by buzzing over it with that 80 grit, you, you kind of remove that waxy coating that's on the top, allows you to kind of get down into the filler, and it just aids in the sanding process. So like I said, I went through 80 grit on the DA to knock it down. Um, 80 grit with a block and then finish it off with 180. It's relatively straight. I mean, it's not bad. It's a lot better than it was. I'm never going to be able to take these, you know, these molding kind of form lines out of it. I, I don't think I really want to either. I want to just make it so it's not overly ripply, um, which I think I've done. This actually feels really good. Uh, looking at it though, um, this happens on occasion with body filler. Uh, if you look very closely, you can see these little those small little holes, those are known as pinholes. Uh, and that generally happens when you stir your filler instead of fold it. Uh, but I, I don't stir the filler at all. I, I definitely fold it over. Uh, but it can still happen depending on the type of filler you use. Some more expensive stuff maybe might not have as much of a problem. Uh, but that's easy remedy. Uh, I'm just going to go through and lay a nice coat of glazing putty over the top of this. So I'm going to mix up some glaze. Put some glaze on this, uh, we'll let that cure, and then once that's ready to go, I'm just going to block it out with, I'll probably start off with like 220, and then finish it off with uh, 320, 400, somewhere in that neighborhood, and then uh, it'll be ready for primer. So, let's do it. All right, got all the body filler smoothed out, or the glazing putty, I should say. Um, I also went through and finished off those areas, so those are all good to go. And uh, 
as I was finishing up everything, uh, I it dawned on me that I never did anything with the inside of this where it was hitting the nacelle. Um, so yeah, I completely forgot about that. So I went in and I started knocking it back a little bit and then I realized huh, that the fiberglass is very, very thin in that area. So I did have to go through and reinforce the back of that, smooth it out a little bit and make it a little nicer. Um, yeah, here's the here's the problem though. I'm not 100% sure. Now I did notch that in a little and I am gonna hand sand it back out, but I'm not 100% sure that that's gonna clear. Um, we'll have to, we'll find that out when we do and uh, you know, just have to overcome and adapt. So um, it, it is what it is. I gotta get this thing into primer. I wanna get it painted and I wanna get it back on the bike. So we'll figure that part out uh, when we get there. But anyway, I'm gonna knock these two little areas down get these things hanging in the uh, in the prep area and uh, wipe them down and we're gonna put some primer on these things. All right, let's get to it. And we're now hanging and ready to go. We're in the prep area. I have everything um, blown off, wiped down with wax and grease remover and uh, kind of dried up, ready to go. I'm gonna go mix up my 2K primer, put it in the gun and get in here and lay a couple of nice coats of primer on these parts. I made an executive decision. I think I'm just gonna mix a little extra primer. My OCD is kicking in. I can't just prime just that one area. So I'll go through and I'll put like at least one good coat of primer on the backside. That way I can block it out, make it look that much better. And uh, at the end of the day, I'll be happier. So, all right, mixing up my primer now. I'm gonna head in the booth and uh, let's get some primer on these things. And just like that, it's in primer. All right, two really good coats of 2K on there. I definitely see that the, well, it's kind of hard to tell, but the waviness is pretty much gone. Um, that'll be great. Yep, a couple of good coats on there, as well as this piece right here. Again, all I really needed it was right there, but you know, one in Rome. So, uh, the only last thing that I have to do to this is really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and guide coat this uh, so that uh, when I do go to sand the primer, it's gonna be a little bit uh, a little bit easier to detect if there's any defects left. Kinda helps out and aids in that process. So, all right, real quick, I'm gonna do that and get right back to you. All right, so what I did was I took uh, guide coat, which is nothing more than a contrasting color. Uh, in this case, it's like a flat black kind of rattle can. Went in, sprayed over the top of everything, just a bunch of little dots. So that's what it looks like over the whole entire surface. Same thing with this one. Went in, covered it all in those black dots. Didn't really, you know, don't, you're not looking to paint the whole thing that color. You're just looking to give a contrasting color so that when I go in here with a block and I start sanding all this down, if there are any divots, if there are any little you know, pieces I missed, little spots I missed, uh, that's gonna show up because there'll still be those little black dots stuck in that area. So kind of lets you high, like identify your high and low spots better if, or if there's any, you know, imperfections. It's your last ditch effort to, uh, to try to make it right before it hits the spray booth and gets paint. So, all right, I'm gonna let this stuff sit overnight and get back at it and uh, start sanding it in the morning. All right, it's the next day. Primer's dry, ready to go. I'm gonna start off by uh, hitting up both of these with uh, 320 grit on a DA. That's gonna be just to break through that outer skin surface so I can get down below to get to the good part of the primer. From there, I'm gonna switch over to wet sanding paper. Wet sanding paper is something that I like to use, especially uh, when I'm looking for a really nice, uniform, smooth, silky surface. Uh, and that's going to give it to me. So I'm going to start off with uh, 600 grit and I'm going to work my way up to 800. Some people would consider that a little excessive, uh, but you know, the smoother and the nicer the surface is, uh, the better it's going to be uh, the overall paint job. You know? All right, so let me get going on that and I'll see you when it's done. Alright, you 
get a feel for what this is kind of producing here. Uh, giving it a nice, really, really soft, velvety, smooth finish. And that's exactly what we're gonna want. So that's the 400 right there. I'm gonna bump it up to 800 after, just kind of go over it, take care of, and get rid of all those 400 good scratches. Uh, and then this thing will be ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, both pieces, get them all finished and show you what they look like when I'm done. And here's the finished product. Uh, all of it's been wet sanded with 400 grit and I went back over it. I ended up uh, going back over it with 600 grit wet uh, and then finished off with 800 grit. This is smoother than smooth, like a baby's bottom. It's all ready to go. Um, ready to go into the booth and get some paint put on it. Uh, so I'm gonna get ready and start hanging these things in the booth. Still gonna dry them off a little bit. I still got some leftover water coming out of them from uh, wet sanding them. So I wanna get those dried up real good, get them hung, get them wiped down, tacked off, uh, start mixing up my paint and get in the booth and start shooting these things. All right, let's do it. All right, parts are hanging in the booth. They've uh, been wiped down with wax and grease remover and they've been tacked off. So they are ready uh, for sealer. I'm gonna lay a coat of sealer on these things. Uh, once we finish sealing them, gonna put uh, two, possibly three, depending on how well it covers. I should cover pretty well because it's black. Uh, coats of Harley Vivid Black. I'm gonna be using PPG, Deltron. Uh, normally I would, uh, we normally spray water base, but uh, apparently there's no good match uh, for this Harley Vivid Black. Harley's not a fan of sharing their paint colors with anyone. Uh, I think PPG is usually about the only one they like to give the formulas to. So uh, it's a sure thing with this, uh, the PPG mixed by my jobber. So I know that's gonna be a, a good uh, good match. So I'm going with that. Uh, to those who say black is black, uh, not really. It used to be black is black, but it's definitely different now. I could show you five different, uh, five different uh, colors of black that all have the same exact code. So some have orange, some have red in them, some have yellow, some have blue. It all depends on, uh, what you're looking at. So black is definitely not black. Uh, we're gonna follow it up with uh, three coats of uh, three coats of uh, urethane clear coat. And uh, hopefully I don't need to scuff and buff anything, but if I do, uh, at least I know I'll have three coats to work with. So, all right, I'll get this stuff going, start spraying. One good solid coat of uh, sealer on there, black sealer, ready to go. Let that flash off. We're gonna go ahead and throw a couple coats of black base on there. Let's do it. So we got two coats of base on this thing. Got good coverage. I don't see any spots that are like see-through or anything. Everything looks pretty darn good. All right, we mix up my clear coat. Start laying the glass. Wish me luck, no runs.
right, one coat of black sealer, two coats of vivid black base, three coats of urethane clear, and we're done. Came out pretty nice, I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, no runs, so that should make me really happy. It's pretty glassy, it looks good. Minimal work in order to uh, straighten it out. One little, a uh, couple little small pieces of dirt there in the top. Um, I think when I was kind of working around the back side of this, trying to get clear on this edge to make sure that there was coverage, uh, I think I kind of popped some some junk. And I had blown the back of this out really well too, but I, I still think I landed something in there. That's had to be where it came from. But the bodywork looks good. Everything looks nice and streamlined, uh, just like it should. All right, so this is where this video is gonna end. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing all back together. And we're gonna wire up the radio, wire up the amplifier, and wire up the speakers permanently, make everything work, we'll get everything all adjusted, um, and uh, just kind of put the finishing touches on this thing. Just in time for spring, too, that's the wonderful thing. The weather's starting to get nicer around here, and uh, I'm hearing more and more motorcycles, so every day that mine's not in operation uh, drives me a little bit more nuts, so. All right, guys. Hey, uh, if you would, please like the video, subscribe. That would be amazing. If everyone would uh, subscribe, that'd be great. That would make me think that there was reason to do more of these videos. So, And uh, hit that little bell for notifications. All right. I think I'm done here. Until the next one, I'll see you.